So, uh, Kevin, tell me about your irrigation system. Uh, how's this thing working? Okay, well, this is our main line here that goes into our drip system. Um, from our pump house, we have a filter right after the pump, so our whole line is filtered. You definitely need a filter if you're going to use drip irrigation. Um, once we come out, we have a um, we have a valve, which is our pressure regulator here. Now, most drip people will recommend you use a, a, an actual uh, pressure regulator and a valve. Uh, we skip that, that pressure regulator step. I find we get a really good job with the valve, but you really have to look at it very carefully. Um, and then this is our electronic valve, which is attached to an electronic timer in our greenhouse. So we can um, monitor when, you know, we can set things on and off precisely and also time things very carefully. We use a, a union for a, just a quick disconnect and we can also fertigate uh, when we disconnect through here. And then we just have our various adapters to get to our main line. We use two inch poly for our main line, um, which is right here, which is uh, really inexpensive and versatile. You can use one inch if it's a smaller line. Um, make sure you size your lines appropriately. Our water comes in here. We have a valve to shut it off. That's, that's optional. We can show you another setup where you can go right into the main line, which is uh, simpler and less expensive too. When we connect our drip tape, we uh, slide it over the barb connector and we want to make sure that the uh, end of the tape is just past the barb. Further is better. And then what we do is we tighten this uh, screw up here until it's nice and good. It's, it's good to always pull on it, make sure it's nice and s snug. And then what we do is we just, I, we like to slide a, a, one of these jute stakes over that and put that into the soil. And that makes it so you can pull on the T-tape and straighten it out from the end of the row. And the drip tape has uh, openings every eight inches for our crops. So we really try and get a, a pretty broad uh, wetting pattern for so our So you know exactly how much water you're applying then when you've got so many emitters per unit. Yeah, per, per yeah, of yeah. It's about 40 gallons per hour per hundred feet is the, uh, is the rate of irrigation on this. So Tell me a little bit about how you, uh, how you time this. How do you try and time your irrigation so that you're not wasting water, not making it go, pushing it down too deep? Well, we're really trying to water just the right amount. You need some tools. The best tool and the cheapest thing is, is the shovel or your hand and looking and monitoring really carefully to see how much water is where the roots are. This one right here, and see how he squeezed it, it just falls apart. This one here holds together. You can see the marks from his fingers. That's a sign that there's plenty of moisture in there and the plants are gonna be able to get it out. And I think the best way to really get the timing is to walk your fields every day or close to that and really check to make sure what, what's happening and time it. We're doing small amounts of water um, very frequently just to water the root zone. These onions don't have roots eight or nine inches down, so it doesn't really make any sense to water that deeply in this field. We just want to do short bursts that get the root zone wet so the plants can take up the water. I do want to emphasize once again the, the whole idea of when, when you're trying to conserve moisture on a shallow rooted crop like onions or a lot of the vegetables that we grow, we don't want to put on long runs uh, infrequently. It's much better to put on uh, frequent applications uh, for short periods of time so that you leave some moisture or you have moisture available right in the rooting zone in that top three, four, five inches, uh, depends on the crop. 